Mikado. That is Swedish for like and subscribe. I'm just kidding. I just read it on the back of an IKEA worker, so I got no clue what it means. But I have a clue what it means to be an artist. And me being an artist also implies that I was once a tiny little art baby that had far too many questions, but I had no answers. And that is about to change, because I have compiled anything and everything that I could think of that I would have loved to know when I was a tiny art baby and scrambled it together into one huge video, which I don't know about you, but back in my days, I would have loved that. And because this video is probably going to be much longer than any other video I usually do where I speak, I will not waste any more of your time or my sanity. And here's a list in non-chronological order. You can skip ahead. But as a little disclaimer, I won't go into detail with anything. If you want something to have like a detailed description on what to do or whatever, then you can just let me know and I'll do that in a separate video. Now, let's start with number one. Seek critique. There is a ton of ways where you can get critique on your work without spending a single dime. You can join a Facebook group, you can post it on Instagram, you can make YouTube videos, or you can join a Discord. You could join my Discord, where the grass is green and the critiques are pretty. It doesn't matter if it's online or offline. However, seeking critique is one of the best ways to improve. And not only for total beginners. Even masters are seeking critique on their work to improve even further. A new set of eyes that hasn't stared at the same painting for 10 to 100 hours just will see some little details that you tend to forget. Sometimes that's a good thing, sometimes that's a bad thing. And there's also good and bad critique. With that I mean if you are seeking critique on Instagram, which means you just post your artwork and somebody comments, I don't like it, which can be completely true. I mean, we can't change their minds after all. However, they could also be writing, well, I don't like it because I think the lighting seems off. And one of these two is good critique. The other one is bad critique. I'm pretty sure you're gonna know which one is the good one. And it probably goes without saying that you should seek out good critique. And with that, I don't mean you should seek out a platform that only gives you good critique, because that doesn't simply exist. And also don't seek out a platform or a community that only adores your art. Because as sad as it is, if everybody tells you how great you are, then you're probably not gonna improve that much. I'm not saying post your art and get bashed into the ground. You should seek out a community that has a good balance between good critique, as in they like your art and they don't critique anything, and good bad critique, which means they like your art and they want you to improve. So they will point out things that they think seem off. Now enough with the critiques and things that can be based on opinions. And let's get into something more factual. The things that you need to learn as a beginner artist. I know for a fact that I have told you this probably 10 times before, but I'm gonna do it again. Because I know for some reason beginner artists just don't want to have it true that they need to learn all the fundamentals before learning anything else. I'm not saying it's all of the beginner artists, obviously there are exceptions to everything, however it's the vast majority to which I include myself. So you need to learn the fundamentals. But why exactly is that? The short answer is that drawing is a pyramid scheme. Not in the come into my group chat and make a hundred thousand dollars a month kind of way, but in the you need to learn whatever is at the bottom of the pyramid first in order to ascend to the next level. And the crazy thing is, if you've learned the things that are at the bottom and you have ascended to the next level and you're learning more advanced things, then you still need to learn the things on the bottom as well, because you have never learned all of it. And to make it as easy as possible to understand what to learn and in what order, here's a little diagram I made. At the bottom are the absolute essentials. The fundamentals like anatomy, perspective, construction and values. If you nailed these four things, then you can pretty much nail every drawing you want. As long as it isn't in color, because color is on the next step. Together with something like composition and gesture. And at the top of the pyramid, we have things like design theory. You know, things that you need to learn when you create 
your very own things. And that is just the essential things that you can learn as an artist. There's probably a hundred more things that you could learn that just didn't make the cut into the diagram. Now for a third thing, let's get into something a little more opinionated again. And with that, I mean there's a good opinion and there's a bad opinion. And that's pretty much the only two things that exist. It's about using reference. Because there's the opinion that reference using is cheating. And there's the opinion that reference using is not. And the latter is the right opinion. If you're a beginner artist and anyone tells you that using reference is cheating or you're not a real artist if you use reference or whatever, they can go suck a d That is absolutely untrue and they have no idea what they're talking about. Of course, there are people that can draw without reference. But that is only because they have a vast visual library. Which means they have drawn the things that they can draw without reference multiple times with reference. And they just know how they look. The skill of your visual library is something that will come in time. It's not something that you can actively get better at, you know, by focusing on getting a better visual library. You can just get better at observing things to retain more information about something that you looked at. The rest will just come in time. And until that time has come, you should be using as much reference as you can. There is good and there is bad reference, obviously. And I could go into detail for half an hour, but for the sake of the video, I will just say good reference has a well-established light source, or maybe two. You can see the form and you can see the silhouette of the thing that you want to draw. Bad reference is either in a super specific lighting scenario that is not the thing that you want to draw, or it's just plain too light or too dark. Moving on to something that I have already made a video about where I go into detail of it is how often do you draw? How often do you practice your skill when you're a beginner? If you really struggle with that, I highly recommend you check out the video. It's pretty new, so you should find it pretty quickly. But the gist of the video is that if you like drawing, you will have some specific amount of motivation to draw. And that means that you can maybe draw for one hour every day. That obviously varies from person to person and from time to time as well within that person. If you have very much time to improve your art and you don't have set yourself a deadline of like 10 years or something, then you can just draw whenever you feel like it. But if you want to improve a little faster than that, I recommend that you draw whenever you can. Whenever you feel motivated to do so and it doesn't make you feel you know, bad. And when you feel that your motivation is fading, then just put in the effort to draw a little more. That way you would improve a lot faster as to you would improve when you just draw whenever you really feel like it and you keep your motivation up a little. You don't make yourself feel miserable by drawing every day and hating yourself for it. Now the next point is actually two points on the list, but I'll just combine them a little bit for the sake of our time. It's about software and hardware. Because when you are a beginner artist, there is an overwhelming amount of software and hardware that you can consider using when drawing. Also, this is meant for digital things. You know, if you draw traditionally, just get a cheap piece of paper, a cheap pencil and start drawing. With colors like watercolors or oil paints, I cannot help you. I have no idea about them. With that said, let's get into the things that I have an actual idea of. The digital things. When you start out drawing and you need a tablet, then there are two things to consider. Do you want a screen tablet or a pen tablet? Which is basically, do you want to draw right on the screen or do you want to draw on a piece of plastic and look up at your screen to draw? Screen tablets tend to be a little more expensive than pen tablets for obvious reasons. Now, there are a lot of pen and screen tablets out there and the prices, they vary, you know, from like 40 bucks for a cheap pen tablet up to five six thousand i'm pretty sure some are even more expensive and to that i say the tools don't make the artists now obviously with the more expensive ones you have features and things that you just do not have with the cheaper ones however the cheaper ones are perfectly fine to draw on if you are a beginner artist and you're maybe not sure if that's really the thing for you, just get yourself a tablet for, you know, under $100. Even with a tablet that cheap, you can still make beautiful art because it's your own skill that makes the art and not the tablet, sadly. 
if you already know that digital art is your jam and you really want to pursue like being an artist, then treat yourself to, you know, something around the mark of 500 to $1,000. In my humble opinion, that is the sweet spot of things where you get the best bang for your buck. Now, on the software side of things, there's a little more variety because you need to consider that some software is only available to iPad users like Procreate or Procreate Dreams. These are one-time purchases that you can make and you have the program all the time. You get the updates, you get everything. However, the downside in quotation marks downside, because there are people that prefer to draw on an iPad, is that you have to draw on an iPad which is for me not the best thing to draw on because it's just a little small for me and my old man eyes but to each their own procreate is pretty good i've used it many times and i'm still using it when i sketch on the go but if you have a windows pc which is most likely the case then you're gonna need to decide between something like Krita, paint tool sci and Photoshop. I'm pretty sure there are other things, but these are like the leading three things that you can get. Now, first things first about these three. Photoshop is factually the best thing. I'm dying on that hill, but it's not the best thing for beginners. Not because it's very complicated and you need to learn a lot of things, because it doesn't matter if you're a beginner artist or not, you need to learn it anyway if you want to use Photoshop. The great downside on it is that it's a subscription-based program. It's from Adobe, who would have thought, which means that they rip 15 bucks out of your purse every month for using it, which is kind of a bummer. However, it is the industry standard for a reason, and its tools and capabilities are really, really good. But if you're a total beginner, then you might be a little happier to know that Krita, a painting software for Windows, is free completely free it's an open source thing and you can just go and download it i have not used krita at all so i can't really tell if it's a very good program but i have seen people draw on it i have heard about people praising it it's gonna be quite good for what you pay which is nothing last but not least is paint tool sci you can get it for free and try it out for i think 30 days or something after the 30 days it's like 30 bucks to buy it's a one-time purchase and you have it. It's just like Procreate. I used Paint Tool Sci a little bit for the trial period and I didn't buy it after. Just because I had Photoshop the entire time and I just wanted to use it to see how it is. My impressions were that it's a very good painting software. It has everything you need. The only thing that really grinded my gears was the UI. The interface that you have to work with when using Paint Tool Sci is just pretty much different from Photoshop and since I only used Photoshop before, it was kind of hard for me. But it is something that only I have because I've used Photoshop the entire time before. If you start out with Paint Tool Sci, you're probably not gonna have any problems with the interface. Now, let's get to the second last point of this video, which is your expectations as a beginner artist. When I was young, naive and happy, I expected to be an artist in no time at all. I would draw every day and every night and within half a year maybe even less i would become a great artist turns out that's not how it works when i was a beginner i had absolutely mind-boggling expectations i didn't know that of course i thought that's you know the expectation that everybody has which is kind of the case because most people they have expectations sky high so my advice for you is to lower them. Lower your expectations and set for achievable things. It will be easier in the long run and you'll be happier achieving these goals along the lines of becoming a great artist. It's a really simple point to make, but a very effective one as well. Don't get your hopes up too high and keep it realistic. Don't go comparing yourself to other people that may have had a lot more of training professional education or whatever. Maybe they're just talent only compared to your past self. And last but not least, your mindset. The beginner artist's mind is a truly fascinating one. Not only do most of them have absolutely unrealistic expectations for their art and their progress in it, they also think of things like faster equals better or more rendered and more realistic equals 
more skilled. These are all things that I have heard beginners say multiple times, myself included sometimes. And guess what? They are all wrong. Your art doesn't need to be realistic and your process doesn't need to be effective enough so you can paint a masterpiece in two hours. Drawing and painting is a process, as well as in learning as in making the art itself. It takes time to learn and it takes time to create art. Everybody does it differently, everybody learns differently and everybody draws differently. And just as everybody has different kind of goals in mind, everybody has a different kind of art style. And whatever it is, whenever somebody says a piece is finished, that's their art. Blatantly saying that it is not a realistic rendering of some kind of medieval woman makes it bad art. It's just wrong and disrespectful. The mindset thing goes both ways when you talk about art of others and when you think about your own art. And the only real advice and the best advice that I can give you to that is build your mindset around the fun of it. Do what you want to do and don't let anybody tell you this is bad because of some kind of stereotype that got pushed in the last few years. If you had fun doing it and you will be having fun doing the next one, then everything is good and your art is cool. With that said, I wish all of the beginner babies here happy drawing. And if you're not a beginner and happen to stumble upon this video, let the beginners know if you have some additional tips for them down in the comments. Goodbye.